I'm Kathy Rowe, and this videotape is all about the basics of anatomy and kinesiology, especially for dance teachers. The first thing that we're going to do is go through all the basic, basic vocabulary of anatomy, starting with the planes of the body. Then we'll go through all the basic vocabulary of kinesiology, and we'll talk about what that all means. From there, we're going to look at the skeleton, we'll name all the bones, and from there, we'll go on to muscles and name all the muscles. Now, after that is where things get really interesting for us as dance teachers, because we're going to go through the kinesiology of what makes the body move. What makes the body move are the bones as levers and all the muscles connecting to those levers that create the movement. So we'll go through all of the body, and we'll see what makes everything move so that we can determine what muscles are really necessary for a beautiful arabesque and what muscles are really not necessary. This way we can help our students work so efficiently. Let's get started with planes. This is the first thing we learn in basic anatomy. Planes are like big flat sheets that go through a body and divide it into equal parts or unequal parts. Round, she's coming around on a transverse plane. So why would we even want to know about these planes as dancers and dance teachers? Well, one of the very good reasons to know about these is when we are designing our warm-up and we are designing our dance exercises, we always want to be aware that we want to design movement on all of those planes, on the lateral plane, front and back on the sagittal plane, and on the transverse plane. Now take a look at my warm-up and I'll make an example of this for you. Here you can clearly see the beginning of my warm-up and as I said, I start with a twist which is sometimes called the transverse plane. I go into lateral movement making a big circle around to the right and to the left. The Here we have our class mascot, Mr. Bones, who's going to help us go through all of the bones in the human body. Now one thing that's very interesting about our skeletons is it's made up of 206 bones by the time we're 25 years old. Before the spine has sort of limited movement, the big vertebrae down the spine, they're called gliding joints, do have quite a bit of movement. And what we have to understand is right here in the sacrum, there's no movement. It's all fused together. Underneath that are two to four little tiny vertebrae that are all fused together also, and this is known as the coccyx. Now, the coccyx is a very, very delicate place. Um, if a student falls on their coccyx, you can see how small it is and how fragile it really is. And so we have to really pay attention to movements like kicks across the floor, big kicks across the floor, because if our students fall during one of those big kicks, they're going to fall right on that very, very delicate place. Let's start out by talking about the properties of muscle. Muscle basically has four properties. It can stretch, it can contract, it's elastic, which means when it stretches, it'll go right back to its original shape if it's not overstretched. And the last property is it's irritable. Now what irritable means, all it means is that it reacts to electrical stimuli, which is great because that's what our nerves do, is they give electrical stimuli to our muscles and that's why they will react. Now one thing that's important to know about ligaments, bones, and muscles is they all have very different properties. Now let's go through and name the muscles from the posterior or the back view. We're going to start right up here at the very, 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 very top of the skull. And you'll see there's a muscle here in blue that comes down and makes half of a diamond. Well, you can see on this chart it's half muscle and half bone, but this muscle, it's very big and it does make the whole diamond shape. This is a very important muscle for us to know. It's called the trapezius. So if we look at the skeleton, we'll see that the trapezius starts way up here at the base of the skull. We're going to be able to see the problems 
analyze them, and then repair the problems from a very scientific point of view. Take their place at the bar, and then they prepare to turn out. Now, this is what we see a lot of dancers do that's incorrect, and we want to nip this one in the bud. They come in, and they start turning out their feet with their knees bent. And then when they get their feet as turned out as they can, they straighten their legs. Now, let's talk about why this is a problem. Come back to parallel in one of our movements. We're going to analyze this devilope, try to figure out what's wrong with it, and then we'll fix it. So I'm going to ask Amanda to always start with compression. She comes up into her passe. Everything's going along fine. Now, Amanda, I'd like you to devilope badly. Okay? As she devilopes, you can see she's leaning back a little bit. She's exaggerating, but this is a common problem. And we also see the knee bending right here. So come back to first position. So as her teacher, I go, hmm, what's wrong with that devilope Amanda's doing? Well, first of all, she has shifted her weight back and not kept it on the ball of her standing leg. Hey, well, how do you fix a bent knee? Well, we know that leg extension, knee extension, comes from the quadricep. So as her teacher, I'm going to tell her, Amanda, I want you to do it one more time. I don't care about the height of your devilope. What I want you to do is stay on the ball of your standing leg, pull up in the quadricep so that that leg stays very, very straight. So here she's...